Cody, who was just five years old, had been sleeping in a tent in his backyard for more than six weeks, attracting the attention of his neighbors. After starting out as a summertime excursion, Cody found himself camping out all night long and surviving the weather. The neighbors were first amused, but as time went on, they began to worry for the boy's safety. Upon discovering the shocking reality behind Cody's extended outside stay, a concerned neighbor eventually dialed 911 which shocked and moved the neighborhood, the Parker family, among the neighbors, observed Cody with a mixture of growing anxiety and amusement. The tale of a young child going camping in his backyard had begun charmingly. They surmised that he might be rehearsing in the backyard in order to join the Boy Scouts, but their laughter soon gave way to concern as one week grew into two, then three, and now more than six, from her kitchen window. Mrs. Jane Parker saw Cody go back and forth from the house with extra clothes and books, Jane wasn't so sure when her husband David casually said, he's just playing, over breakfast, the nights were growing progressively colder, and she was perplexed by Cody's insistence on being outside without any parental supervision, after Cody had been camping outside for seven weeks. Jane decided to bring him some freshly cooked cookies one bright, crisp morning. She crossed the grassy meadow and gently tapped on the tent flap, Cody, are you there, she softly questioned, after a little shuffle, Cody's head emerged, his sleep-tangled hair disheveled, hello, Mrs. Parker, Cody said with a smile, he grinned and took the cookies, but neither his brief expression of gratitude nor the little view Jane had of the inside of the tent, a tiny pile of books, told her why Cody was sleeping outside. Cody zipped the flap shut before Jane could get a good look inside for any indications of problems. Jane talked to her spouse about her worries when she got home. He is only a young child. What if he gets scared at night? She worried, her anxiety visible on her countenance. But David was reluctant to get involved. He proposed, let's give it another week. Did he not imply that Cody appeared to be content? Her husband was right. Cody seemed all right. His clothes were neat and tidy. Yet he looked a little mush from sleep, he was neither depressed nor hurt, Jane was still unable to get rid of her worry, Cody continued his habit as the days went by. During the day, he played in the yard, frequently sitting in silence by the tent as though it were a secret, whispers and conjectures from the neighbors led some to believe it was simply a kid's game, while others worried that something more sinister might be going on. Oddly, Cody's parents were hardly ever seen in the community people in the neighborhood started to take note while they were jogging or walking their dogs, stopping to stare at the little tent in the backyard. It was odd enough to start speculations when a little child was seen living outside on a regular basis, considering that Cody was just five years old. Jane's worries about him increased. She gave her friend, a child psychologist, a call one evening, she clarified. Spending so many nights outside, away from his family, is not normal for a little boy, her buddy concurred, speculating that Cody's circumstances might be explained by an underlying problem Jane was unaware of, why, after all, would a little boy like that be left on his own, what was more crucial, where were his parents, when Jane encountered Cody's mother, Sarah, the next day, she took advantage of the chance to investigate. Jane had to hustle to catch up to Sarah as she was walking briskly back to her house before she vanished inside the door. Hey Sarah, what up? Jane inquired with anxiety in her voice. It has to do with Cody. He has spent so much time in that tent. Is everything at home in order? Sarah appeared surprised, and her reluctance was quite evident. When Jane realized this, she made the decision to approach her in a cordial manner. What a beautiful morning it is, isn't it? She said. Perhaps we could grab some coffee. In an attempt to start a discussion, Sarah gave a small nod, but her gaze flitted nervously in the direction of her home. Jane made a mild offer in the hopes of establishing a rapport that would facilitate a conversation concerning Cody. A pleasant cafe is located right around the corner, Jane said. It might be nice to have a conversation, just the two of us, in a kind and friendly manner, despite appearing to be distracted. Sarah fumbled with her keys and forced a meek grin in response to Jane's unwavering friendliness, but Sarah turned down the offer, sidestepping Jane's inquiries and avoiding a straight conversation about Cody's predicament. Sarah looked back at her house and remarked, I really should be getting back, in a strained voice, as Jane sensed Sarah's avoidance, 
the discussion began to dwindle, although she made an effort to keep the conversation light. It was obvious Sarah wasn't ready to go too personal just yet, in the hopes that it might inspire Sarah to open up, Jane offered Sarah support and company, Jane moved a little bit closer and said, please let me know if there's anything you need or if Cody needs anything, although Sarah nodded and appeared to accept the offer for a brief moment, she would not discuss the reasons for Cody's prolonged stay in the tent. Sarah abruptly left the room and disappeared inside as soon as Jane persisted in asking her about Cody, leaving Jane bewildered. We can discuss this at a later date, Sarah said as she bundled herself into her home. Jane stood there, her emotions boiling over with worry and annoyance. She sensed that something was wrong and that unraveling the riddle could be vital to Cody's safety. Jane waited on the porch, mindful of Sarah's need for a loan, and watched as she stepped inside. She headed down the stairs with a heavy heart, her mind racing with worry about Cody's puzzling position and Sarah's evasive approach. After a few moments lost in thought over the brief interaction, Jane was left with more concerns than answers about Cody's well-being after their discussion abruptly ended. Her steps were unsteady and her thoughts were racing as she made her way back to her own home. Cody slept outdoors for an extended period of time. Why was this? For what reason was Sarah hesitant to speak up? With every question unanswered, her will to find out the truth grew stronger. Jane, feeling frustrated but resolute, chose to pursue the subject with her husband. Maybe David might point out anything that she had overlooked. She needed a new viewpoint. David was found in the living room, completely absorbed in a book. As soon as she arrived home, sitting down swiftly, she detailed the distressing events of the day. Noting Sarah's hasty departure and her reserved replies, Jane recounted her talk with Sarah, as he listened. David's face became grave, he murmured, this doesn't sound right, and put his book down, evidently worried by the possibilities, he leaned forward and rubbed his chin carefully, given Sarah's evasive answers, Cody's unique and disturbing prolonged outside stay is even more concerning, we have to take action, he declared with conviction, it's out of the ordinary. Furthermore, David continued, and it's not safe for him to be out there alone at his age, knowing they couldn't do nothing. They sat there and thought about what to do, a swift action was required, because this was such an uncommon scenario, they deliberated over how they might help or step in, perhaps we could propose inviting Cody over for dinner, Jane proposed, seeking a subtle approach to coax him out of the tent, without disturbing Cody or Sarah too suddenly, David agreed thinking about community services that could discreetly offer assistance. The two of them felt obligated to keep a closer eye on Cody to make sure he was safe. David casually mentioned that they could take turns watching over him from the window while he set up a little binocular station near the living room curtain. After some consideration, Jane decided to keep an eye on Cody to see if he showed any signs of distress or strange behavior. This helped put her mind at ease. More straightforward approaches to comprehending Cody's backyard camping were also covered. How about we ask him to come to the park for a kids' group activity? Jane put the question to the vote. That way, they can observe his social interactions with other kids and notice if he acts out in public. While eating supper, Jane and David plotted how to approach Cody personally in order to get a better understanding of his predicament. David took the decision to simply approach him and have a conversation. They might learn more than they bargained for in a casual conversation. Recognizing the power of a positive attitude, Jane nodded in appreciation of David's initiative, so that David could see for himself if there were any hidden problems. They decided he would go to Cody's tent, I'll bring him some snacks so it seems more casual, David planned, already considering the optimal time to strike up a conversation. Jane was both nervous and excited hoping that this one-on-one -on -one conversation would finally explain what had happened during Cody's campout. David intended to go the next day in the hopes of catching Cody in an off-the-cuff moment for a casual conversation. As he imagined their conversation, he thought of some things to ask and made sure his tone was friendly and approachable, keeping an approach that was both neighborly and supportive. They spoke about possible outcomes and ways to deal with them. Is he simply bashful? Or is there a chance he's concealing something he feels is inappropriate, Jane thought to herself.
David concurred that they should go cautiously but firmly to make sure Cody felt encouraged rather than questioned, they decided to begin gently but be ready to voice their concerns more strongly if needed, we'll start slowly, but we'll have to think about taking more drastic measures if it looks like Cody's safety is in jeopardy, David said, Jane nodded. Feeling both determined and anxious as they worked out how to interact with Cody in a tactful but effective way, to avoid frightening Cody. David approached his tent early the following morning and greeted him cordially, Hi, this is Mr. Parker, Cody, he joyfully said, just wanted to say hi and see how you're doing. As he walked up to the tent, Cody felt at ease immediately because of the warm, inviting tone in his voice. He asked to be allowed to join Cody for a short while as he knocked on the tent flap, introducing himself, may I come in for a little while? David added, I brought some snacks. And he held up a package of cookies, he waited, thinking that by being friendly, Cody would be more inclined to let him in or at least strike up a conversation. Cody gave David a fleeting smile as he peered out the tent, but he did not extend an invitation to enter. He said, hello, Mr. Parker with a quick grip on the tent zipper, standing at the entrance, his eyes darted with a mixture of curiosity and caution, making it obvious that access to the inside of his tent was forbidden. David tried to talk to Cody about his camping experiences, asking him if he enjoyed spending the night outside, Cody shrugged and said, yeah, it's fun, appearing to avoid making eye contact as he looked around the yard, in an attempt to get more information. David asked Cody what his favorite aspect of camping was, but his responses were evasive and vague. Cody was evasive, shifting the topic fast and providing hazy responses about how much he enjoyed being outside, he said, I like the stars. And then glanced across to a tree in the area, he used his exclamation of, look, a squirrel, as a diversion from talking about his non-stop tent stays, after their brief conversation, Cody was kind but guarded swiftly apologizing and shutting the tent flap. His voice was firm but gentle as he continued, Mr. Parker, I have to go now. Cody zipped the tent shut, leaving David standing outside with a few unresolved questions. David nodded, understanding the dismissal. Although Cody expressed his gratitude to David for the cookies Jane had brought the day before, he stayed silent regarding his motivation for going camping, I appreciate the cookies, he grinned and gave David the empty plate, saying, they were really good. After their brief exchange, David sensed Cody's reluctance to reveal more as he accepted the dish, and the child promptly withdrew into his tent, when David got home. He told Jane that Cody had not talked to him about why he had stayed in the tent, as they sat in the kitchen, David said, he was polite but kept changing the subject whenever I got close to asking why he's out there. Jane listened carefully, her expression worried as she took in every detail of David's meeting, she was desperate for any information, but David could only reaffirm Cody's unwillingness to provide any. David told Jane, he thanked me for the cookies, and that was about it. Holding back the empty plate that Cody had given back, both of them let out a sigh. Annoyed at the lack of details and Cody's deliberate dodging of their inquiries, they spoke about what to do next, attempting to come up with a way to learn more about Cody's circumstances without invading his privacy. Concerns were being raised concerning Cody's well-being due to his increasingly reserved manner. Jane paced the room and remarked, If he won't talk about it, something's not right, David agreed. Nodding, pointing out that Cody was being evasive, which was strange for someone his age and implying that there was more going on here than just a love of sleeping outside, despite being disappointed by the slow development, they decided to persist in their efforts to assist him. He must not be abandoned, perhaps he simply requires additional time to trust us, David suggested, endeavoring to maintain a positive outlook. Jane nodded in agreement, her determination growing stronger as she grew more focused on finding a means to overcome Cody's defenses and guarantee his safety. In order to go forward without adding more stress for Cody, they thought about getting some outside counsel. Perhaps we should talk to someone who knows how to handle these kinds of situations. Said Jane, they decided to consult a friend of theirs who worked as a child psychologist for advice. The call was made by David, who described Cody's lengthy backyard camping trip and their fruitless discussions with his mother. Jane and David felt better about what to do next after the psychologist listened attentively and offered her viewpoint. 
They vented their frustrations by detailing their encounters with Cody and his mother and detailing Cody's predicament. As Jane expressed her growing concern, she mentioned that he has been out there for weeks without saying why, the doctor offered a number of explanations for Cody's actions, but they should prioritize making sure he is safe, Jane and David took her counsel to heart and decided to notify the proper authorities in their area so that Cody might be protected, we need to do this carefully but firmly, the psychologist urged, Jane and David were ready to ask for aid. Thinking it would help Cody the most, because they knew it was a heavy decision, they contacted the local police to report their observations, feeling a combination of fear and determination, Jane called, her voice calm but anxious, she went on to say, we believe a child in our neighborhood might be in a troubling situation. Before outlining their worries and giving specifics about Cody's predicament and politely asking the authorities to investigate with care. Jane and David were visited by two police officers the next day to obtain a formal statement, anxiety and relief raced through Jane's veins as she anxiously opened the door, the cops politely greeted themselves and started to gather their notepads, ready to document Jane and David's every word on Cody's predicament, Jane and David went into detail about their worries. With Cody's long stint of living outside being their main point of emphasis, he's been out there night after night. And we've tried talking to his mother, David informed the cops, his voice betraying his concern, Jane filled in the blanks with remarks regarding their encounters with Cody, painting a vivid picture of the peculiar circumstances that prompted their phone call, the police took careful notes and probed for further information regarding Cody and his family's actions as they listened intently. One police officer wanted to know how often the suspect saw his parents. Has Cody mentioned anything to you directly? Their meticulousness showed that they were serious about getting a feel for the whole scenario before acting, Jane and David were reassured by the officers that the inquiry would be carried out discreetly so as not to disturb Cody or his parents, we will handle this with care, one of the officers elaborated, our priority is Cody's safety, but we want to handle this without causing unnecessary distress. Jane and David gave the cops the last bits of information they required while nodding in agreement at the considerate method, observing the officers make their way to Sarah's house to have a conversation with her. Jane and David felt a mix of gratitude and anxiety, watching the policemen cross the street in their official uniforms, they could be seen from their living room window, they held on tightly to one another, praying that their choice would bring about a better future for Cody. Jane and David witnessed the cops pounding on Sarah's door while they stood by, Sarah opened it with a look of bewilderment and amazement on her face, Jane and David could observe the cops' poise and professionalism as they introduced themselves and got ready to talk about why they were here, Sarah conversed with them outside her front door while her body language and hands were hard, giving the impression that she was tense. Sarah's emotions and fleeting remarks were all that Jane and David could see at times, the details of their conversation were lost in the distance, the reason given by the authorities for their visit was that neighbors had expressed worries about Cody's welfare, they made sure Sarah knew they were there to help, not to accuse, by speaking politely but plainly, Sarah was starting to understand the seriousness of the issue, judging by her serious nod. Even though Jane and David were not privy to all the circumstances, Jane and David straining to listen, they managed to pick up on snippets of the conversation, such as, welfare check, neighbors, concern, and Cody's well-being. The cops ended their first conversation with Sarah and made their way to the backyard, indicating that they wanted to speak with Cody face to face. Jane and David observed the officers as they crossed the yard with deliberate strides. Their faces both sympathetic and businesslike, they realized that in order to truly comprehend Cody's circumstances, this subsequent portion of their investigation might be essential, the officers walked up to Cody's tent and knocked softly on the flap after introducing themselves, police, just here to talk, a subdued officer exclaimed, they waited calmly, allowing Cody time to get used to the unannounced visit. Taking this approach was meant to allay whatever fears he might have had upon seeing two adults in uniform at his makeshift doorstep, astonished by their existence, Cody carefully lifted the flap and took a quick look outside, his young face was flushed with excitement and apprehension at seeing the police officers in question, he was hesitant to say, hi there. 
but he managed to unzip the flap just enough to reveal his face without completely revealing the interior of his tent. The police made a polite introduction and inquired politely about Cody's living situation, and Cop inquired, in a cordial tone, How long have you been camping out here, Cody? In response, Cody shuffled to his feet and glanced at the floor before saying, A while. The cops tried to put him at ease by nodding sympathetically. After some hesitation, Cody asked the officers to come inside his tent. Silently, he said, You can come in if you want, and moved aside to let them enter. The cops exchanged a quick glance of relief. They had earned Cody's trust by inviting him in, which would help them comprehend his situation better. Max, Cody's dog, was seen curled up on a sleeping bag inside. This explained why Cody had stayed outside. The cops took note of the comfortable arrangement Cody had created for his animal companion, which clarified why he had decided to put up with the inconveniences of extended camping. Cody was persuaded by the officers that their purpose was assistance. Not punishment, one of the officers kindly said, we're here to make sure everything is okay for both you and Max. Cody's first fear started to subside, Cody confided in the police officers about Max's illness after he concluded they were friends, not foes, of his little sanctuary in the garden. Since I wanted to be there for Max while he was sick and couldn't go inside, I stayed with him. Cody stated with confidence that he is his closest friend's confidant and that he relies on him. As Cody detailed his 24-hour tent care for Max, the officers nodded in comprehension, the police were relieved to finally grasp the situation and met with Cody to plan how to get Max the medical attention he required, we'll look into getting Max some assistance from a vet, one officer proposed, taking out his phone to search for nearby vet clinics, with a hopeful expression on his face. Cody watched as the assistance he had been waiting for finally arrived. They encouraged Cody to continue being loyal to Max and offered to assist him in communicating with his parents and neighbors about the situation, you've done an incredible job sticking out here with him, they praised, plotting to help Cody communicate with grown-ups who may have misunderstood his intentions at first, Cody, filled with gratitude and relief, watched as the officers departed, their silhouettes fading into the distance, after what seemed like an eternity, he finally felt relief. As if someone had finally understood and shared his secret, after watching the story above, do you have any thoughts, feel free to share your opinions in the comment section, if you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel, that all about today's stories, see you next time.